removing fenders and installing the rear wheel sprocket. Here is a standard 26 inch single speed cruiser bicycle. The coaster brake is fastened to the frame with an M6 screw and nut. Begin taking off the rear wheel by first removing the coaster brake arm screw and nut with a 10 millimeter wrench and a screwdriver. Remove the rear wheel nuts with a 15 millimeter wrench. Once the nuts are removed, push the wheel in and remove the chain from the sprocket. Set the wheel aside. Remove fenders from the frame. Use 10 millimeter wrenches. Detach top brace bolt and nut. Remove fender brace bolts. Remove rear fender brace bolts. Remove rear fender bracket bolt and nut. Finish removing the rear fender by unscrewing the bottom screw. If the screw is difficult to remove, position the bike vertically and press the screwdriver downward and turn. This will help remove the screw and prevent the head from stripping. Keep all fastening hardware together in a container so they can be retrieved easily. Begin preparation to mount the rear wheel sprocket by removing the coaster brake arm, the 17mm nut, the dust cap, and the washer. Use the following tools, channel lock or vice grip, piece of rubber tubing to prevent scratching, and a 17mm wrench. Cover the coaster brake arm with the tubing to prevent scratching. Clamp channel lock firmly on the end of the coaster brake arm. Position the 17mm wrench and channel lock as shown in the photo. Push both down and loosen the nut. Once the nut and washer are removed, a dust cap will be remaining. This needs to be removed and thrown away. With the coaster brake arm, nut, and washer, and dust cap removed, the rear wheel is now prepped for the installation of the rear sprocket. Below are the items needed to install the rear sprocket. Heavy duty shears, rubber sprocket gaskets, thread lock, metal gasket plates, 9 M6 bolts, 9 M6 flat washers, 9 M6 lock washers, 9 M6 nuts, 9 hole rear sprocket, 10 millimeter socket wrench, 10 millimeter combination wrench. Cut one rubber gasket in between two holes so that it can be inserted inside the rear wheel spokes. Insert the gasket inside the rear wheel spokes and around the hub. Place the second gasket outside the rear wheel spokes and around the hub with holes lined up through the openings of the spokes.
line the holes up through the openings in the spokes. Place the rear sprocket over the outer rubber gasket. The direction of the teeth should be bowed or curved out and away from the wheel. Begin mounting the metal gasket plates inside of the spokes and on top of the inside gasket with the holes lined up. Insert the bolts through the outer sprocket holes, through the two rubber gaskets, and finally through the metal gasket plates. Present the M6 lock and flat washers and nuts onto each bolt. If the nylon insert nuts are not being used, apply thread lock to the bolt threads. First add the flat washer to the bolt. Add the lock washer over the flat washer. Loosely screw on the nut on the end of the bolt enough so it won't fall off. Repeat the process for all the bolts, washers, and nuts. Don't forget to add thread lock to the bolts if needed. After loosely adding all the washers and nuts to the bolts, make sure that the metal plates are evenly touching each other and not overlapping. Set the rear wheel on top of a large cylindrical garbage can. Looking directly over the top of the hub, adjust the sprocket so that it is centered. Using a 10mm socket and combination wrench, gradually and evenly tighten the inside nuts starting about two threads in. Go all the way around and evenly tighten about two threads in. Don't tighten any more than this. Once all the bolts are slightly tightened, check to see if the sprocket is directly centered with the hub. If not, you can adjust the sprocket to center by pushing or turning it. Adjust the sprocket to center by pushing or turning it if it is not centered. Once centered, gradually tighten the nuts all the way around evenly, once again two or more threads deep. Check the sprocket once again for absolute centeredness. If not centered, adjust the sprocket accordingly. Centering the sprocket is important because it provides an even chain roll. If the sprocket is not centered, the chain will run tight and loose as the wheel turns. Continue to gradually and evenly tighten bolts and check sprocket for centeredness. If the sprocket is difficult to center, take a large combination wrench and hammer and gently tap in between the teeth to move the sprocket. Once the sprocket is as centered as possible, do a final and even full tighten. Inspect the levelness of the sprocket. This is critical for proper chain teeth alignment.
Rotate the wheel 45 degrees four times and inspect the levelness by looking straight down over the sprocket. If uneven, tighten bolts to compensate. Once the sprocket is properly installed, reattach the coaster brake arm. First place the coaster brake onto the hub. Set the washer over the coaster brake arm. Screw on the nut over the washer. Tighten using the 17mm wrench and channel lock. Make sure that when the nut is tightened, the axle does not turn. Use the 17mm wrench to slowly tighten the nut. Remember to tighten without rotating the axle. Check to see if the bicycle sprocket was loosened and wobbles. If so, tighten the bearing cone nut with another 17mm wrench. Note that the coaster brake arm and nut are being held secure on the right while the bearing cone nut is being tightened on the left. With the channel lock and wrench still attached to the other side, tighten the bearing cone nut just a small amount with another 17mm wrench. The bicycle sprocket should be able to freely twist back and forth slightly but not wobble loosely. Tighten or loosen the bearing cone nut accordingly. Do not over tighten. Once the sprocket and coaster brake arm are properly installed, set the wheel aside and begin reinforcing and trimming the fenders. Next video, part 5. Reinforcing and trimming the fenders, reinstalling the rear wheel.